Hello and welcome guys to my um, drive center project. Now since you saw the lathe last time quite a lot has happened. First of all I mounted it onto one solid base which was uh, not the case before because it was three separate sections one here, one here and one here and it was quite shaky and um, I was getting a little bit of vibration issues so I decided to go for one solid base and mount that on top here this is now sturdy as a rock and um, it's not going anywhere so I'm quite happy with that now also I changed the way to tension the um, belt here before I always put a wedge in between the two uh, board sections that's not possible right now so um, I put two hinges on the motor here on the bottom and like with the three pulley uh, drill presses you can now um, put down with two screws at the back you can tension down this motor this is a floating pulley, this is loose and uh, then you can tension both uh, belts simultaneously and that works pretty well and um, I also added some tools to the tool post now here I have uh, a radius tool for roughing down, for example interrupted cutting or uh, for roughing off the scale on rusty pieces. Then I have a right hand turning tool which I use for um, straight turning and finishing and of course it can be rotated, uh, rotated for a um, facing tool. Then we have a parting tool which I can only use in combination with a crank of course because it's not the most rigid of setups but it works quite well. And I have finally a boring bar, and um, well, that's used for boring, obviously. I have uh, replaced the um, hex head screws by um, Allen screws here, which makes them easier to put out. They're stronger that way, and um, well, they, they look nicer as well. And in the center, there's also one um, Allen bolt, and I uh, soldered this. Uh, wrench into it so that it is always on there and uh, it doesn't get lost. Works pretty well and I'm very very happy that I made this tool post. Here are the hinges that the motor is mounted on and um, you can basically just uh, loosen the bolts in the back then this motor will come up and uh, loosen the tension on these belts and um, well then there are two hex screws just like here and you can uh, tighten them down. I plan on replacing these with wing nuts so I don't always have to break up a wrench but um, this way it's already working fine and I'm very happy with that and also for better visibility and for better video quality I have added a lamp on top of my lathe. This is the steel we're going to use and it's pretty tough stuff you can see these chips um, they come off the light blue which is the hottest stage that you can go with um, uh, high-speed steel tooling. If that should smoke my tooling then I will go over to insert tooling but um, at the moment it's doing fine and um, we'll continue now roughing this down to diameter and then we will um, adapt it to the taper that is inside the spindle so that it will sit nicely in there. taper happens to be 5 degree so I set up the, uh, the cross slide and compound slide to a 5 degree angle and uh, we'll turn it down so that the smaller end is 12 millimeter which uh, also goes to the spindle or better even go 10 millimeter so we have something extra so it's not hitting anything and uh, then we'll check the taper and uh, we'll mark it and check where it wears and where it doesn't 
and um, thereby adjusting the compound slide, or if it's just a minor adjustment, just do it with a file. wearing from here to here and as you can see it's sitting in here solidly so uh, I guess that should be enough we're leaving it at that and then we're cutting off a little bit of here drill it through, tap it and then uh, we can uh, get from the back of the spindle with a threaded bar, get hold of it, and um, yeah, then turn the uh, 60 degree tape around the front. <coughs> Right, we'll do the rest on the bench. <sighs> okay, I just uh, threw this together. Here's the part with the taper. And on the other end there's a screw and a washer. And it seems to work quite fine. Now we're going to turn this down. Today's tomorrow, I didn't have a camera with me, so I just decided to finish this piece off. Uh, this diameter is now a slip fit inside the uh, spindle bore, and um, I also machined the 60 degree taper on here. On the other end, you might have noticed, I machined a washer out of aluminium, so that uh, this thing sits, uh, the screw sits on here without galling the uh, spindle, and um, it actually works quite nicely. The taper sits here nice and accurate. So I'll just demonstrate it, uh, its repeatability and accuracy by uh, taking the, uh, the uh, center out and uh, putting it back in and checking on the run out. Okay, to take this thing out of here, you need two tools, namely a wrench and a hammer. So the wrench just breaks this screw loose in the back. And then you loosen it a couple of turns. 
then you smack it with a hammer and that drives the center out of the taper and uh, now you can basically continue screwing the rest out and there's the center and here's the uh, screw with the aluminium washer and now we'll put it back in which just goes the opposite way clean the taper and just tighten it up nicely <coughs> all right let's check for the run out all right so let's check it um, and you can see that's fluctuating between one or two hundredths of a millimeter which is more than enough to what I need okay now uh, as you can imagine I don't own a, a face plate for this or a drive plate so I decided to use the chuck as a drive plate and that will go in such a manner I'll put the uh, jaws out just like that and uh, in these slots where the jaws would normally go I will uh, put the um, lay of the dog to act as a driving uh, plate okay a little stupid example here because I don't have a shaft long enough so this would go in here sitting on the uh, drive center and that's the way the setup would be looking like so um, of course you uh, would take a longer shaft and then um, that will all work together perfectly so this is a little bit short example but uh, you get an idea on how it would be like like that.